What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to your daily creative reading for August 25th. We are going to hop right on in. Happy Thursday, my friends. Happy Thursday. Spirit, whoa, those were pretty expedient, if I do say so myself. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just move this down here. There we go. Okay. Dearest you, we are gathering our magic together to help you celebrate your new beginning. Oh, that's nice. You're stepping into a new version of your life, getting to tell a new story as you create it. Doesn't it feel like spring when the urge to expand wells up inside you from a primal place? The form of what you are growing has yet to take shape, and it is exciting to experience this new and fresh beginning. It's normal to feel both push and push back when entering any kind of new relationship. It's okay to admit you don't really know what to expect. What you can know is it's time to dive in and allow that new version of life to take shape through you on behalf of your partner in life, spirit. You have made it to a new level of awakening and contributing, and we are so excited to see where this will take you next. We're so proud of you. That's a delightful thought. New beginnings. There's some new moon energy right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> okay. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives, please? For August 25th. August 25th, please. In everyone's highest and best good. I'm seeing the green flame. I don't know. So this is... Um, I did a meditation, uh, the most recent Christina Lopes meditation, and what started to, it's so wild to me, because I had this, like, image of the green, like, because I was, the blue flame kind of rocketed into my meditations, and just my consciousness and awareness a while back, and then while I was doing that meditation, um, the most recent one, um, it was just for, uh, you know, moving past blocks and healing things challenges wounds whatnot and um the this the, like the green flame i hadn't i haven't worked with this before but during the meditation i just saw this like pillar of green fire in my whole system and it was like in each energy center clearing and purifying it and it just it was like it, it's so wild to me but super cool so i don't know if anyone um you know it's you know if that a that meditation would be helpful but i'm just seeing the green flame <clears throat> I have to look into what it all means and, and also just feeling into what it means for myself and, and whatnot and um, how that resonates. But maybe it resonates for you as well. I think it's Ar Archangel Gabriel, I want to say. That's what feels. That's how it feels, at least. Um, I haven't looked it up yet. But um, Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for August 25th? Four of Swords. The call to adventure. The call to adventure. Ace of Swords. Maybe it's like taking a time out connects you with your truth again. Two of Cups, Queen of Cups. And maybe not even a time out, but this, like, the call to adventure is, um, I think, part of speaking truth about something that you understand that you may not have before um this moon energy uh it's interesting there's like blue green <laughs> um but it's i feel like there's a lot of inward turning or turning inward right inward and then the moon that's what that represents right turning inward um I'm hearing in praise of the small. It's um, part of the book Gathering Moss by Robin Wall Kimmerer. But like starting small, like something starting small. Maybe you're planting a seed for something smaller. I don't know. Or set to grow. I'm not sure. Um, okay, what's this here? So we have the two of wands and the queen of cups. Okay, I see what this is. This is this is the energy of could become a tower if it goes unchecked, making plans that are disconnected from your intuition and emotions. Things that matter on paper, but do they matter to you and how do they matter to you, right? Why is it that this idea or this, like, how is it connected to uh, a sense of purpose? And that's, to me, that's what emotions connected in terms of creative energy are. Like, 
how connected is all of this to your sense of purpose? And how are you allowing it to connect to your sense of purpose as well, right? How are you allowing it to connect? Okay, I don't know why. Um, this dream is quite loud, so I'm going to share it for what it's worth. Because um, it, it came in at the beginning of the reading, and then I was like, I'm not sure what that is for. But then, okay, so I had a dream, and um, this was like... I want to say a week ago, maybe, um, I'm recording this on Wednesday. Um, so, um, I had a dream that I was late to my, to, to a wedding. So I was late to a wedding and I didn't have the clothes that I needed. I was at this hotel and I showed up really late and, um, I feel like I had missed, I had missed it. Like I had, I, yeah, it was so strange. And then I didn't the in the dream, I ended up going through time as though it was pretty linear. Um, but then when I went down into the um, the stores in the hotel, so it was like a hotel was connected to a shopping center beneath. And so I went into the stores to look for a suit to wear. And as I was fitted for the suit and everything it it time turned backwards. So it's like time turned backwards. And it was actually like, 12 hours before so I was not even just on time I was like ahead of time so it's I'm almost getting something to do with that perhaps in terms of this like um, planning because the two of wands is not just a planning energy but it's like it's like seeing between fixed points in time and I feel like this may be uh, about the fluidity of that um, the fluidity of that and and um, certainly time operates in a fixed manner, but what I'm, what I'm getting here, what's coming through is really this sense of, um, time kind of slipping through. And I think the tower is if we believe that it's so fixed that like, if, if it's like fixed in a way that is unchanging as opposed to, uh, flexible, consistent. Thank you. Oh my gosh. It's like there's fixed in terms of unchanging, but then there's fixed in terms of consistent, right? So I feel like that's an energy that maybe you're stepping into, uh, that you're finding yourself in more. Consistency. What's the protagonist energy here? Knight of Wands. Um, that's like, this is sort of like taking all of the, it's like I'm hearing momentum. It's like momentum forward. This is ambition meets passion meets movement. So this is, it's not just making a decision, but this is like, what, what do you do with, with the fire inside of you? What do you do when your truth kind of, you know, it's like, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing a knife hit shale and the spark from that, right? So it's like starting a fire. That's what this does, I think a little bit. Um, and I think it's like, it's almost like you're rising out of this moon state. What's the protagonist energy or antagonist energy here? Sorry. Thank you, Spirit. Three. The antagonist energy is the Page of Wands, the Chariot, and the Ten of Pentacles. I almost feel like this is a little bit of like thinking too small. But thinking too small, but I also think a little bit of... Um, I think of the chariot as power, like it's a it's a momentum and a, a way that we can move forward emotionally. It's an emotional power, right? So I almost get that it's like, I almost get the page of ones in reverse where it's like blocking your own inspiration or blocking your own movement forward. I'm going to clarify this because I feel like this is the 10 of pentacles is can be a little bit nerve wracking um, because it's it's not just everything that you want, but it's like everything that you build and there's some vulnerability and risk in that right if you're in a, if you're in a building space or place with people in terms of projects or in relationships it's like you're yeah that can be really tricky okay eight of cups justice seven of swords temperance five of swords it's almost like balancing out losses, balancing out perceptions of losses, balancing out. And I think this is sort of like, um, it's not the wheel necessarily, but I feel like justice is the way that you, um, it's sort of like the way that you create an integrity with what is, right? Um, so it's like pulling yourself out of a place of um, 
sometimes the eight of cups is out of necessity, but then other times we are in that eight of cups because we see what needs to be done so that we do it. But then we might reflect in ways that make us feel like we, um, like we did the wrong thing and it sort of splits our energy and it steals from our own, like we, we steal from ourselves. We rob ourselves of energy. And I think it's about coming back into balance, um, coming back into balance because there's, this may make you feel pretty conflicted inside. So I, I mean, I'm glad that these are coming out here in terms of the antagonist, because that means it's sort of the, the biggest challenge today and ongoing with this particular spread is your perception of what's going on. And isn't that always the case though? The perception of what's going on the perception of what's within you as well empress is the challenge and the overcoming is the ace of pentacles two of cups nine of pentacles oh wow um <clears throat> as you're progressing here through the day and just through this week potentially also i see this this empress is almost showing up as um, how difficult it can be to give birth to ourselves, to give birth to something that we truly want, right? This 10 of pentacles. There's a reason why the 10 of pentacles would show up in the antagonist position. And that is because we're struggling with the full articulation of what we want. The chariot is here. So movement towards what we want. So I think the empress is showing up in this energy because there's a sense of, um, what if it's everything that I want and then some? And what I like about that sort of tension, what I like about it is because it sort of pulls this Ace of Pentacles to the fore. What you offer, what you can offer. Um, and not just what you can offer, but this is almost like planting a seed of belief in yourself. Um, planting a seed of belief in your dream. Planting seeds, period. There's a lot of momentum to support this, to support it for sure. But I think that the big the big thing is just getting past all of the reasons why uh, or the, the reasons that you've given yourself as to why something can't happen or why it can't be that good, why it can't be, you know, why you, you know, just all of the can'ts, like look at all of that, that energy. And I feel like it's, it's like taking in, taking in all of it, but then releasing it too. And, and it's almost like, um, I don't know why it showed up in my feed, uh, but on YouTube, it, it showed up where it was like how to make like seed bombs, like how to take, so you take paper and soak it and then you blend it and then you put seeds in it and then you pack it in and then you can put them into the ground and they, it's like, you know, a whole bunch of wildflowers and things like that. It was really cool, but it's almost like that, like I'm seeing that process happening here. Like there's, it's like the challenge of recognizing, not only recognizing the empress, but recognizing that energy, that depth of creativity, that depth of generativity, that depth, um, it's like, it allows you to, to take remix and, and make what one substance was so paper for example in, in the video that i saw and then change it fundamentally to be what helps something grow right paper on its own won't plant the seed but if you put it with the right ingredients it just takes flight and takes off Maybe you feel like you, you're more curious than actively participating in whatever this empress represents to you because of the page of wands. I'm thinking it of it, I'm see, it's like it's feeling like curiosity energy, but like I'm feeling like it's curiosity energy. But I'm also seeing that it's a little bit of um, outside looking in like you, you, there's like this need to be this. The protagonist is the knight of wands. So you need to be this active participant you need to be an active participant in the good, in your good. And this, you know, what does this mean? Like for me, um, for example, different plans that I've made and, um, you know, someone approached me about helping to do some stuff with their studio. And so it's like doing all of those things, yes, but understanding that taking steps, what does step taking mean for you? Sometimes it can be uh, making a call to somebody that day. Sometimes it can be something else, but trying not to get so overwhelmed with the details and the big picture, because sometimes we can feel the weight of the big picture and it can feel really pressing. So we have to remember that the sky knows how to hold itself up 
and all of the things that come to life beneath that sky, we do not have to have hands in the details of, right? Trees know how to grow on their own. So what are the things that know how to manage themselves in your life? Don't get so overwhelmed by the big picture that it's hard to ground it, right? Um, now, the two of cups, the things that you're learning from this challenge and taking away from it, I think it's like a new way of um, not just intimacy with self, but intimacy with other people as well. Um, it's like this is kind of depth of intimacy because you're getting better at being good with you. Um, and it goes a little bit beyond confidence. You know, it goes a little bit beyond confidence because sometimes we can doubt ourselves and we can doubt ourselves on the basis of, did I make the right decision? Did I make the right decision? I was talking to somebody today um, about just they, you know, they're going through some changes in their life. Um, and he was, I don't know, it was, I, I felt for him. I wanted to be, I wanted to, I wanted to be like, I want to give you a hug. <laughs> Can I just give you a hug, my friend? Um, but he was talking about just how he, he doesn't, he didn't know if he did the right thing. Right. And I was like, well, there, there are reasons why you can think that. So think that, you know, and this is where I feel like a little bit of the moon energy can come in when we have the ace of swords together, like that together. It's like, did you do the right thing by, you know, speaking your truth? And some of the things that he's going through right now, I was like, holy shit, this is like a lot. Like there's, I was like, I can absolutely relate to what you're going through, my friend. But he was talking about um, just not being sure whether he made the right choice to do something to articulate his truth because he was worried that it would hurt other people. And I told him, you know, and, and just related some of the things that I've been experiencing. And it's like you can doubt whether you did the right thing always. We can always do that. But the and, and doubting for the right reasons, not that there's a right or wrong binary we want to place this into. But are you doubting whether you did the right thing because there was so much love shared or there was so much appreciation for a place? right are you doubting whether you did the right thing because you're confused about the details like that or are you doubting whether you did the right thing because you don't know your truth are you disconnected from your truth or are you um and that's where it's like uncertainty about these things can it can kind of place us into um it can put us into a place where we don't we not just we don't just doubt ourselves but we count ourselves out before we even get to be counted and i think that's where this page of wands is coming in the antagonist energy so i share that story i'm not going to you know give all the details of his experience and stuff like that cuz that's his and he shared with me in confidence but it's just that kind of energy of of doubting ourselves and and i feel like there's this reconnecting this could be something i mean two of cups tends to be soul connection soul bond energy um recognition of uh, as well and with the empress here that's also a relationship card as is the ten of pentacles on the chariot so i do see these cards as you know representing the ways that we connect with others too um independent of creative projects and creative energy um but i just i feel like this two of cups to me represents ways that you're coming back into union with yourself and that is going to reflect in how you're coming into union with others, right? Um, and whatever that means, friendships, relationships, you know, coworkers, whatever. It, it all, it's it's coming back into um, harmony. It's like there's a harmonization taking place here. There's a harmonization taking place, but I feel like the biggest thing here to start, understand that that call to adventure, that, you know, that movement forward largely is going to come from some rest and reflection and I feel like this is a bit of self-compassion as well some self-compassion too mm -hmm. being easy with yourself and remembering that it doesn't being easy on yourself and having that self-compassion doesn't mean that things are easy, right? It doesn't mean that things are easy or, or simple. It just means that you're choosing to hold your highest vision and your highest version um, within reach of yourself. You're not putting it so far out of reach that you're looking to punish yourself for not being there yet, right? Um, I'm re-listening or re-listening. I don't know. You know, I've uh, kind of made it small commitment to myself to... Uh, 
listen more to things like uh, right now I have the um, Hay House Empower, I think it's Empower You app. And I've been listening to that more than than music uh, in the past couple of days, just because I'm trying to reset my energy. Um, and and I think too, just this time of year, like fall and winter are my absolute favorite seasons. Um, I mean, the Christmas side of winter, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> By February in Southern Ontario, I'm about like, I, I mm, Mm -mm. (laughs) I'm kidding. I still love like snowstorms and stuff like that. Uh, But it's just, it's a, it, for me, it's like a a time of vitality, right? It's a time of energy. I I feel like I get my energy back. Um, but I say that just to suggest that, uh, something that Louise Hay talked about in the book that I'm listening to right now, which is, uh, you have the, the powers within you is that, you know, guilt seeks punishment. And if we hold this nine of pentacles outside of ourselves such that we can't access it because we are not giving the four of swords its full due, its full necessity, what we can do is um, we can really make it impossible for ourselves to be. We, we can't really pull ourselves out of this moon place um, because we don't really fully allow ourselves to connect to the part of us that understands the truth, <laughs> that understands the truth of a situation, right? And... Um, yeah. But there is truth here. And I feel like there's a lot of healing of this. There's a lot of healing of that um, coming through. As with everything, I feel like your emotions are key, but figuring out why does the Empress, it's not about the Empress terrifying you. I don't think it's that. But how, you know, I think about... um how nerve wracking it is to imagine things working out at times, right? How nerve wracking that can be because who would you be without the story of the struggle? And that's sort of what I feel like is, is being released here, right? Being released or integrated at least, right? When you're planning for the future, who would you be without that struggle? Who would you be without emotional discord, Right. And, and, and asking yourself this often, because we don't get to a place where we're just one and done. It's over. Right. That, and it doesn't have to be this profound struggle either. It doesn't have to be a profound struggle. And I think that's what these cards are here to say is that it's okay to, to leave the, the, the struggle behind, to leave the struggle behind and to choose to come into balance and love yourself a little bit more to let yourself let yourself love even though these aren't cards of love (laughs) I feel like that you know they're not cards of love but I think so allow me to uh, explain that and qualify it so you know we have the eight of cups and the seven of swords and the five of swords when we lack love either for for self or you know we we feel a lack these are all energies that love can push us into if we don't integrate it and work with it in a way that puts us in better command of ourselves and our energy and not that we need to be in control because there's a surrender piece to this too but I feel like we need to have this aspect of compassion because love can can put us into all of these different states and part of that is balancing out part of that is really coming back into balance And that's where it's like the justice and temperance in between all of these is sort of like the alchemical way or the alchemical impact of your truth, the alchemical impact of your truth. So how willing are you to let it be good? How willing are you to let it be good? I feel like that's the title for this reading. I'm going to write that down. (laughs) How willing are you to let it be good? Because I feel like that's like, it's not even saying like, how good can it get? It's like, how willing are you to let things be great even um yeah camera's shaking a little bit because i'm writing fast um okay so let's clarify i'm just gonna do some like minimal clarification here Spirit, what message do you have for my daily creatives, please? Messages for my daily creatives. K 
can you forgive yourself enough for it to be good? Can you forgive yourself enough? Or can you forgive yourself? I don't know where that's coming from. I mean, it's very much Louise Hay. So um, my guides were having like the time of their life yesterday. <laughs> I was driving home listening to it and I was like, man, I felt so hazy. And then like, I, cause I was trying to think about while listening, I was like, well, I, you know, this is, this makes sense right now and blah, blah, blah. I felt kind of hazy. And then it was listening to Louise Hay. And then what's funny is that there's a car that drove past and it said, the license plate said hazy, but H A Y S Y <laughs> like Louise Hay hazy. I was like, aha, that's so funny. <laughs> like, so I think it's just, um, my, like I said, my guides are Muppets, honestly. Um, yeah, let's see what comes out here. Three of Cups, Nine of Wands, Two of Cups. I'm going to clarify these first. So, again, the Two of Cups. Um, you, might, you might find that there are different events or, um, you know, I want to say celebrations, but like coming together is like with other people um, where – you're starting to see the ways that things were constructed either mentally for yourself. Like when you ask yourself, how willing are you to let it be good? I feel like there's going to be things that will be, will come across your path in terms of events or celebrations. Um, you know, we are generally speaking, entering into a, a season of holidays, no matter where you are in the world. Like I know in, um, in the and it's not even like hemispheric really because i know in my hometown we have like amazing diwali celebrations in november october november around there and like there's so many different so it's it's like a time of coming together right but i feel like there's this aspect of um i feel like there's this aspect of things becoming clearer uh, through different events so just watching observing like stepping back a little bit to observe um, to observe from that nine of pentacles place right to observe from a, a more confident place uh, and not confidence as in you know cocky or anything like that but just observing with the understanding that you know your worth and you're not observing to see what the lack is you're observing to say where can I let this be great Am I allowing this to be amazing? Am I trying to control the details so that it is amazing instead of recognizing what is amazing about it and just allowing, right? So it's coming from that place. That's where the nine of pentacles is kind of factoring in for me here. The nine of wands is, I think, a little bit of releasing this resistance to the empress, right? Releasing this resistance to the empress. And in a way, it's almost like... Um, releasing the resistance I almost see as this like this then becomes you because it, it the way it's coming through it's like you see yourself it's like a rebirth or it's a birthing process where you recognize that maybe part of the this is so interesting maybe part of the reason you were resistant to this empress energy is because you weren't recognizing the empress energy within you and that creative potential that creative fire right that willingness like the empress is is very willing to let it be amazing to allow right the empress doesn't need to kind of figure out all of the details because there's an understanding that comes from an understanding and also a sort of established authority um, but not controlling right we're not talking about you know dictating how things will be it's about looking at things as they are and saying huh where does this fit into what my values are where does this fit in to what i'm about and I think that's where this Ace of Pentacles allows you to shift from this Nine of Wands place. You kind of see, this strikes me as like seeing how far you've come, right? And that the moon is here. It's almost like you're seeing not only how far you've come, but how far you had to carry those Nine of Wands and you're now free to put them down and to conclude that cycle. So that when you do get to this place of beginning to articulate yourself, your truth, your authentic voice and authentic experiences, right? Um, I watched this thing by Gary Vee. I can't remember if I talked about it or not, but I watched this um, clip on Instagram where he talked about, you know, shifting from um, being a, an expert into an enthusiast, right? And isn't that the best place for all of us to be? Like we are, we are experts of our own experience, yes, but it's so much more freeing to to release yourself from that need to have everything be perfect and just to be in this place of, in, I'm an enthusiast, right? Um, and I think that's sort of how that, it, I'm almost seeing that that's like a shift there, but 
uh, in the energy because sometimes if we're disconnected from our truth, we look for information outside of us to make us an expert because we are not articulating our truth. <laughs> so it, it gets to a point where we are super duper disconnected, um, not from speaking it, but because we aren't recognizing um the truth of where we are, or at least we're not like, there's something like we might feel ashamed of it. We might feel like it's not enough. We might feel all of these things that disconnect ourselves from it, right? We disconnect ourselves from that truth. Um, and I feel like it, it's like this healing of that so that it's, it's showing up as, um, it's like clearing the energy of the future a little bit, um, clearing the future so that you can then integrate things emotionally and that, that don't come from this place. Like if you're feeling shame about where you are in any capacity, um, it makes it really difficult to be in an empress energy of allowing, right? Because you're trying to, you know, instead of dealing with the feeling or clearing it, it, it sort of places you in a position of, um, feeling like you have to actualize differently, feeling like you have to do something differently. And it means that you can't really show up in your authentic truth. So this is really about healing that. Uh, it's about healing that. And then this two of cups tells me that that's where this is, you know, it's sort of like the pivot. Um, I've never watched friends, but all I'm hearing is my friends say that pivot. Apparently there's like a stairwell scene <laughs> or something with a couch. Um, but it allows you to pivot towards this two of cups this relational intimacy, because you've, you've gotten to the point of intimacy with yourself, you've met yourself, right? Um, and so, uh, Spirit, can you please clarify this moon and knight of wands, please? Please clarify this moon and knight of wands, please. And thank you. Moon and knight of wands. So we have the four of cups. Four of cups. I'm almost feeling like there was a stagnation. I don't know why I was shuffling for a second one. Yeah, I feel like there was stagnation because of emotions. Like there was not this like, um, so we go, we have the four of cups and the king of cups. Uh, I feel like this is almost coming up in the king of cups in reverse where it's like momentum was difficult because it was like, how do it, it's being uncertain of how you feel. It's being uncertain about, you know, um, what's actually going on in the heart center because uh, I almost feel like this needed to, like you were kind of like, this is more squirrel energy than mouse, but I almost feel like this like squirreling away your emotions for what, like a rainy day, like why, why, why that, why that was happening, I don't know, but I feel like this Knight of Wands is reconnecting, not just to your, you know, your passion and your ambition and your drive. I feel like this is reconnecting to the emotions that make that meaningful, that make that like why you're so excited to do something and to move towards something. Okay, this is like a lot to clarify, but we'll do it. Spirit, can you please clarify these cards in a simple way in our highest good? They give us a sort of directive of what next what to do and where to go next. Of course, all of them. <laughs> um, okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so we have the Empress. This is amazing. So we have the Empress, the Ace of Swords, the King, or sorry, the, the Knight of Wands. Again, these are repeating energies to, to close out this part of the reading is amazing. Okay. So I feel like you get back into this Empress energy within yourself. And it's, it's almost like, there's a truth in you of the, there's like an empress truth. There's an empress truth that you don't run from. Knight of Wands, you're not running from, you're running with. And I feel like it's such a beautiful energy that allows you to make progress. And instead of marking perfection, you're just marking the signpost. And you're like, man, this is amazing. This is great. Let's, you know, it's like, um, I think about it in terms of uh, the Bruce Trail in Ontario, for example. Um, it's been on my bucket list for a while and it kind of is to hike the thing, the whole thing, like top to bottom. Um, and people do it, but on the way, so it's quite like the Camino del Santiago, I think it is. Uh, ooh, I might have mixed that up, but whatever. They call it El Camino. And, you know, there's stops along the way. Same thing with the PCT, Pacific Coast Trail, where there's, you hike for a bit and then there's stops along the way. And I almost feel like this is taking in the scenery as opposed to feeling like you're getting to the end destination. And that's an empress energy of savoring, not just where you are, but savoring who you are and how you're becoming along the way as well. And I feel like that is, it kind of changes the way that you, um, the way that you not only present 
your, um, I feel like it changes the way that you present, um, both present and recognize offers from others, um, as well and the way that they offer of themselves because that changes too right when we're able to recognize specific things we can then see um we can see things clearly and it's almost like the integration it's like a night baby like <laughs> this sounds so weird but the it's like the knight of wands and the knight of pentacles it's like they're making this new night baby like um Wenticles. Oh my God, that sounds, <laughs> but oh God, but this is where it's like, it's the combination of those energies into something else, into something new. And that's where it's this progress forward. And this is beautiful because the clarifying energies on this are the ace of cups <laughs> and the three of pentacles. So it's like this grounded way of recognizing not only love for what you do, love for where you are, love with others, right? Opportunities for love. Um, but there's like a building energy behind that. There's a foundation behind that. And I feel like maybe this foundation needed to be remedied for you so that you could then see, you could then see yourself. Um, and if you can't really see yourself, it's really difficult to see others clearly too, right? And and not out of fault or anything like that. But, you know, one of the things that I had to get really honest with myself about recently was, you know, if things are not so, like, it, it doesn't make you any less, um, to have things that you want to achieve, to have, you know, places to go in terms of like, you know, healing to be done and, and all of that. And um, it's about taking the, 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 the inclination to, to feel shame out of the equation because we're all works in progress, right? We're all works in progress. Um, yeah. And that doesn't take away from your value. So I just, to share, it's, but, um, okay, so then, Oh, I'll do the affirmation one first. So yeah, I feel like this is like about sort of resetting the foundation. Uh, it could be creative work coming through in terms of the Ace of Cups and the um, Three of Pentacles. It could be work uh, to in terms of contracts or projects or jobs that really will fire you up, but that also have a grounded quality to them and that they're true for you, just meaning that they resonate with the deepest parts of your truth. Like this is who you are, creative individual, um, loving, kind, caring, compassionate, finding a way to integrate all of that into what you do allows you, that's how you live your truth truth, right? You live your truth in that way. And I feel like this could be an offer, um, you know, to uh, just like an offer to do, I don't think it's like a huge project, but it could just be something small. Um, it's, it could be something small that helps to reconnect you with that core part of your heart, with that core part of your heart. Okay. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for the 25th, please? These affirmations, please. Whoa. I trust my inner ding. That's actually something that Louise was talking about in that audiobook. Um, trusting your inner ding. You were born with an inner knowing, what Louise calls your inner ding. Listen to it and let it guide your actions. That inner ding is such a real thing. Oh, so good. And how little we, you know, when I think about it, I've something I've been contemplating too is just the way that shame disconnects us from our inner ding. Because if we're in shame, if we're in these negative emotions and these negative perceptions of self too, because that's where the label comes from that is then associated with the feeling, right? So it's, it's almost like trusting your inner ding becomes difficult because you don't see yourself as worthy of being connected to spirit to begin with. So it, beco it comes through this tiny, tiny little like, like eye of the needle type thing. Right? So. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives, please? It is safe to ask for help. Oh, I just heard um, uh, safe in harbor. Safety in harbor. When you fear you can't do it all by yourself, maybe it's a sign you don't have to. When you stop trying to do it all by yourself, help appears. And also asking for help can, you know, it just sometimes includes asking your guides, right? So one thing I, I said was uh, the other, I think it was like last week. She's like, okay, I'm done trying to do this on myself, to do this by myself. Um, spirit, just help me to understand what I need to do next. Guides, angels, teachers, protectors, ancestors. 
I don't know enough to know what to do next. So help me to understand what the next step to take is. And that is gradually starting to unfold, right? So it's just remembering that sometimes guides, angels, and, and our ancestors can help, but we have to ask. We have to actively engage them in the process of building our lives and engaging in it, right? That's sort of like the quiet prayer that we offer. Um, okay, so with love. How are we for time? Okay, not too bad. Dearest you, do you know how much we love you and want to help you? We're here for you and we hear you ask for guidance, but you must let go and let us help you. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, I love this. I I love it when stuff like this happens. I geek right out because I'm just like, yes, this is like I this is what this is why I love tarot. Spirit speaks so loudly sometimes and so loudly but gently and subtly it's beautiful okay so i'm gonna read that again (laughs) do you know how much we love you and want to help you we are here for you and we hear you ask for guidance but you must let go and let us help you you don't have to do it all you've done your part now let us do ours you would be awestruck if you knew how many strings were pulled through the matrix to give you what you need and desire spirit has a plan and when you sign up to be a co-creator you need to remember to allow the partnership It's not one-sided. Your desires and plans meet up with those of spirit. Remember, though, spirit's timetable and ideas of how things will play out may be quite different from yours. Trust us. Spirit's ideas are amazing. Now let go and let us do the magic. Pay attention to other areas of your life, and before you know it, a miracle will have taken place. We love you so much. Yeah. Are you ready for miracles? Right? How willing... How willing are you to let it be good or great? How willing are you to to allow miracles? Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. That is that is your reading for today, my friends. If this resonated, please give it a like and subscribe. I'd love to have you on the channel if you are not already. But uh, if this is where we part, I hope that wherever this finds you on the time-space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, it finds you very, very well, my darlings. Take care. <laughs>